Hello friends, enemies, and those still under review. I am popular content creator and certified right-wing extremist, Pewdilist Pi the Second, and I'm a masochist. The moment I finished the last video and published it, my eyes glazed over, and the very masculine urge to just pick a direction and walk for several days without stopping took over me. And that's where I've been. When the search party finally found me unconscious in a different country, I finally came back home. Still in my fugue state, I made the 100% completely sane choice of rewriting all of my map generation code. Now, seriously, there is a good reason for this. In the previous versions, the world size is about one-fourth as wide as Terraria's smallest world and nearly a third as short, which makes it about 12 times smaller, counting total blocks. Pair that with speed rivaling Terraria's mid-game, and the world in my game felt extremely small. The reason why the world was so small was because my world generation code was abhorrently bad. If you've ever looked into sorting algorithms, the equivalent is microwaving your brain for half an hour. So I chose the slowest method to generate my world instead of the much faster and not much more complicated, objectively better method because I'm not smart. And every time someone tells me I'm smart, they only reinforce unrealistic expectations I have to live up to that I'm not sure I can live up to and that I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint everyone when I grow up and end in a dead end wage slave nine to five working minimum. Anyways, I chose the worst option the first time and the better option this time. Here's the difference between how it worked and how it currently works now. Both versions are Voronoi noise, which is essentially placing random dots somewhere in an image and then going through each pixel on the image and coloring it based on the closest dot. It's very simple, but it works well for making chunks of stuff in different places, which is how the world generation works. The old version for each pixel or block in the world checked through each of the thousands of points in the world essentially doing this many operations for one world. The new version works like this. Instead of generating completely random points, we instead make a grid. In my game, the grid is 10 blocks by 10 blocks, but because I'm lazy, I'm gonna draw five blocks by five blocks. For each grid square, we place one point somewhere random within the square. Due to complicated math reasons, we know that a block anywhere within this middle square here is always closest to one of the points in these nine adjacent squares. So we can be confident in only checking these nine points for each block. That cuts us down from this many operations down to this many operations. As you could probably tell, one number is a little bit smaller than the other, which means it's faster. Top it down with other smaller optimizations like checking whether a block is part of a cave or not before looping through those nine points to skip calculations on all of these blocks and avoiding slower syntax by just using faster syntax. And I'm down from a small 1000 by 450 block world taking about 30 seconds to generate to a couple frames almost instantaneous on a world more than four times the size of the old one. 2000 blocks by 1200 blocks. This optimization should allow me to include more complicated and slow methods of generation, things like procedural dungeons and more natural boss arenas. For now though, I've just been focusing on the jungle biome and here's what I've made. The first, most boring and unnoticeable change is the background rehaul. It visually looks very similar, but inside it works different. The previous version just had one layer of really tall textures layered across the whole world, which worked fine for the previous smaller world size, but with larger worlds, increasing the number of sprites sideways led to lag, and the sprites were too short and would end halfway down the world. To fix this, I changed to a square grid of textures instead, and as far as I know, there haven't been any problems with it but let me know if you experience any glitches. Throughout this entire update, I've had my eyes on making the third boss, so the next thing I did was make the tools needed to fight it. I made a new tier of weapons, these two I'm particularly proud of, and this new set of armor, with of course multi-class elements. With this gear done, I could get started on the boss itself. So this boss has a number of components. There's the arena, the behavior, the balancing, and the loot. The arena is pretty simple, a zigzag corridor ending in a big box for the arena with a small chest on the inside to store the boss spawn. There's unintended behavior with these hallways disappearing inside caves, which makes actually getting to the arena a little bit difficult at times, but otherwise the structure is plain and I want to improve it at some point. I'm thinking of adding extra rooms with loot inside, but until I extend the functionality of various items to make more items even possible, I don't have enough item possibilities to actually add any more items outside of main progression. This is changing in the next update along with adding chests underground. The behavior is also pretty simple. The boss has three bullet patterns that it changes between randomly. The first one is a simple bullet burst 
which is probably the one that kills me the most often when I fight it, even though I thought it'd be one of the easiest attack patterns to avoid while making it. Uh, the second most dangerous attack is this random homing bullet one. I'll admit that it's bad design to have random bullets flying around, especially ones that home, but this one doesn't actually end as much attempts as the previous one. The last attack is my favorite and the easiest one to dodge, and it's the bullet wall. The bullet wall will shoot three bullets in the second phase it'll shoot five and they don't home or anything but if this attack happens when you're on the edge of the arena you have to choose between getting hit by a bullet or getting hit by the boss the balancing took me about as long as just making the boss uh, i did have to fix bullets because sometimes they inflicted iframes and sometimes they didn't which caused massive variation in damage especially when the frame rate changed when i did fix this the average dps of the player dropped so i had to buff all the weapons again the loot at the moment is pretty plain there's just one drop from the boss called the empress's wings they're the first wings that you can actually use to fly in the game but they're more like a double jump killing this boss also makes new mobs spawn in the jungle that drop both the moss balls and the thorns which can't be used to craft anything yet but be patient those will be important later these mobs are also the most difficult ones yet and i have actually died to them a couple times and that's pretty much all i got done this update it was all in service of making this boss the vile thorn empress but in the next update it's probably going to expand and improve the underground exploration to make the game feel more in-depth. After that, I've got to implement this guy, who's basically going to be the equivalent of the Wall of Flesh. That's probably going to take another couple weeks, even after the underground update, so it's going to be a while. Before I leave you guys for another five and a half years, though, I'm going to have to ask you to please play the game. The download is in the description, and when you're done playing it, just let me know if there's anything I should change. Should I make any particular boss harder or easier? Should I change their attack patterns? Should I make one or easier or harder to find? Just let me know so I can improve the game, and hopefully by the time I'm done, it'll be good enough to show off to any potential employer so I can actually get a job. Anyways, that'll be all for today. I'll go back to my hibernation, and I'll remember never to play League of Legends.